My name is Richard Lewis, but you might know me by another name, Dick Penderin. Yes, Dick Penderin, that's me. And I live in Merthyr Tydfil. Well, I used to live in Merthyr Tydfil before I died back in 1831. A long time ago, I know. But I wasn't born in Merthyr Tydfil. No, no, I was born in a small town called Aberavan by Portalbot. And I moved to Merthyr in order to find some work. Now, Merthyr Tydfil was a very popular place. There was a lot of coal and iron and limestone underground there. And there was a lot of work in the mines to dig for these very, very valuable resources. I worked in one of the iron mines, Penedaren, in Merthyr. In order to get the iron, we'd have to dig in tunnels under the ground. Now, these tunnels were noisy and they were dark. So we'd have to use lamps like these. I had lots of friends down in these mines, including my best friend, my cousin, Lewis Lewis, or as his friends like to call him, Lausin or Helior. <laughs> in order to get at the iron, we'd need a tool like this. And we'd do this for 12 hours every day. And it didn't do us any good. Now the dust that would come up as we were mining would really affect our lungs, but we had to do it because we had to raise money for our families. Now, once we'd extracted the iron, we'd have to put it into huge trolleys in order to get moved out of the mine. Now, if it was the men's job to mine for all this iron, whose job do you think it was to move these trolleys out of the mine. Well, the children. Yes, there were a few jobs for the children. One was to open and close doors to make sure that the air would circulate. And the other would be to push these massive trolleys out of the mine. You see, children weren't allowed to go to school back in 1831, no. They had to earn money for their families. <laughs> Ten shillings. Ten shillings for a week of work. Now, shillings is the money we'd be using, and like pounds, like you would be using nowadays. Ten shillings for a week of work. How much would that be worth? Now, I know that one shilling is worth 12 pence. So that would be one pound 20. I mean, what could you guys buy with £1.20? I mean, a bar of chocolate too, if you were lucky. I was expected to pay for food for an entire week. That's breakfast, lunch and dinner for me and my wife for seven days. And rent. I had to pay to keep a roof above my head. Of course, some people had plenty of money. People like... William Crochet. He was one of the iron masters and he owned the ironworks. He was responsible for paying me, but he didn't pay much. Me and my friends were poor while he lived a life of luxury. Look at him with his fancy coats and his expensive jackets and hats. He was so rich that he could even afford to build a castle. And that's exactly what he did. He built Cavartha Castle in Merthyr Tydfil. Oh, he thought he was so powerful and majestic. But really, he was horrible. Here we were, barely able to pay for food and rent. And whose fault was that? William Crochet's fault. And in May 1831, you were not believe what William Crochet said. Less money for you. Less money for us. Less money for us. William Crochet was expecting us to work for less money. Can you believe it? Oh, we were very angry. A lot of us were already in debt. Now, one day, the bailiffs came to Lausin's house. Okay, now a bailiff is someone who collects your property if you can't pay back a debt. 
So the bailiffs come to his house and take away a chest, a chest that was very valuable to him. We'd had enough. Things had to change. We had to raise our voices so that everybody could hear it. We needed to protest. We decided we needed a flag for the protest. So we took a flag and soaked it in calf's blood to make it red. Now many people since then have used a red flag as a symbol of their suffering, but we were the first. We also decided to put a loaf on top of the flagpost, just to show what we wanted. Food in our bellies for a fair price. And there we were, thousands of us, walking towards the centre of Merthyr Tydfil. The working classes, the pit workers, the women, the old people, the children, all underneath the banner and with our voices loud. And who was at the front? But my friend Lausin. Now Lausin was a good man, people respected him, and somebody even managed to get his chest back from the bailiffs, brought it down to the centre of the town, placed it there so that he could stand on it and address the crowds. We have had enough! We need more money so that we can live! Things have to change! Bread! Or oh, blood, bara nay white. Bread or oh, blood, bread or oh, blood. The whole crowd is chanting, bread or oh, blood, bara nay white. Suddenly, soldiers start turning up at the protest. Not many of them. There's thousands of us. They can't control us. Some people had started looting the homes of the bailiffs, getting their property back. Oh, the soldiers were not happy with that. And then bit by bit, more and more and more soldiers arrived. 800. And they opened fire. Hundreds of people were injured and some got killed. The protest had failed. We'd lost the battle. The protest lasted some four days and 26 people were arrested for taking part, including me and Leusin. We had to go to court. And here we are in court, waiting for the verdict. Lewis, Lewis. You have been accused of wounding Private Donald Black of the 93rd Highland Regiment on June the 3rd, 1831. You have been found guilty. I sentence you to transportation to Australia. Now, although I didn't understand a word that the judge had said, I could tell from Lucin's expression that the news wasn't good. I was next. My legs were shaking, my throat was dry, and I was sweating. Richard Lewis, you have also been accused of wounding Private Donald Black on June the 3rd, 1831. You have been found guilty. Because I don't speak English, I couldn't defend myself. I couldn't tell him that I did not injure that soldier. The whole thing was unfair. I sentence you to death by hanging. Court dismissed. I found out later what that meant. They'd found me guilty and I was going to die. On August the 13th, 1831, I was hanged in Cardiff prison. My final words were, O oh, Argoith, to my gamweth, O oh Lord, this is an injustice. I was 23 years old. And you know what? I didn't injure that soldier. 
It turns out that another man called Jan Parker admitted on his deathbed that he is the one that injured Donald Black. I was convicted of a crime that I did not commit. And yet, I don't regret being part of that protest. No, we the working classes stood up against the rich and powerful people who treated us unfairly. Our protest inspired many other protests. There were some in Newport in 1839. I am now considered a symbol of the working classes who are willing to fight for their rights. If you go to Cardiff, you'll find a plaque outside the market where the prison used to be. It's there to commemorate me. So next time you're in Cardiff, go and find it. And remember me, Dick Penderin. <laughs>